three games. The championship. This right here is the future of wrestling. VOC Nation Radio Network Wrestling with History. Next. So I met Randy uh, when he was a puppy in Memphis. Uh, and he was very, uh, oh, couldn't wait to, you know, publicity and be in the magazines. And I met he and his brother, Lanny Poffo, and his dad, uh, uh, Randy, uh, not Randy, uh, Angelo. Angelo Poffo. I became, I knew, it, knew them from traveling on the road. Um, I had a great relationship that went far beyond in a lot of ways. When the magazines were banned, for example, by WWF and Randy was one of their major stars, if Randy saw one of our photographers somewhere, uh, he'd give him a wink and he'd call him over in a corner or whatever and he'd let the guy take two or three pictures of him. You don't know where you got those, right? Okay, you know, take a walk. <laughs> Tell Bill after I said hello, man. So I always got messages back to me, hey, tell after I said hello, during the days of the ban. And we, he and I would talk periodically. We'd see each other on the road or in an airport or something. He was always, hey, Bill after, how you doing, man? And we talk. The things turned around, and this is the story, for um, <coughs> things turned around to get very uncomfortable. We, uh, I would made a phone call to him. We were sitting in the editorial offices. He wasn't with us, uh, discussing a storyline when he uh, won the WCW World Heavyweight Championship. What are we going to do with this story? It's going to be a boring story, just Randy Savage wins the title. Going to sell two magazines? Maybe. Why don't we do this? One of the editors came up with an idea that some kid, as Randy Savage was coming down the, the, the railing there, some kid yells out, Hey, old man, you can never be champion again. We all went, wow, that's great. So I said, I know Randy. I want to call him and make sure this is okay with him. So I told Randy what the headline would be, old man, the, uh, uh, the, the something or other that spurred Randy Savage to the world championship. Hey, Bill, after you think it's going to be good? Yeah, go for it, man. So now, magazine comes out, and a couple of months later, I'm in Los Angeles at the Enoki Peace Festival, and Eric Bischoff comes into the hotel about one o'clock in the morning, and I just happen to be down at the desk talking with a bunch of people, and Bischoff, I said, hey, Eric, he says, listen, I'm really tired. He says, I hope you have a good time at the Enoki Festival. Don't take any pictures of any of my guys, and by the way, Randy Savage wants to kill you. That's mem so mem remember when when we talked about this last week. I said I didn't remember if you told me the story or Bischoff did. No, no, I, I told you the story. Eric doesn't remember a lot of this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I but I I had the um so so uh in, in quick quick aside uh when I when we when Hogan was doing Hogan and Friends in Allentown at Ag, Ag Hall, mm -hmm. um I through Jimmy Hart. Um, we got to do some of the press for that. And I picked up Eric Bischoff from the Philadelphia airport and I drove him to Allentown. And I said, you know, we do a lot of work with Bill Apter. And I swear I heard this same story from Bischoff's side, but I'm not he sure. He probably I'll read it in my book. Uh, <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> no, I love Eric. Eric and I, but I don't want to, that's a story for another right. show. Okay. Yeah. So now why does Randy Savage want to kill me? So now, um, I fly back the next day and I'm like, really? Because I Randy Savage and Scott Steiner were two of the people you had to be concerned about. Because you never knew which Randy or Scott you were gonna get when you see them. Randy was moody at times. So now we have a plaque made for Randy Savage. I have no idea what's coming. Come back of the year. Don't you see look at this guy left WWF. He was a broadcast, goes to WCW, wins the title, right? So I'm in Baltimore and I keep hearing in my head that Randy Savage wants to kill me. I'm backstage in Baltimore in the dressing room area and Gary Jester lets me back there and the, the promoter and uh, Randy starts, comes in from outside with Elizabeth um, and uh, Medusa and Nancy Benoit. 
and the girls were all making a fuss of, oh, Mr. Bill, Mr. Bill. And I, I look at Randy, just looks at me. He's got the cowboy hat on the whole bit. And I said, I have something for you. He says, what is it? I said, this beautiful plaque, come back of the year. Oh, let me see it. He holds the plaque up, looks at it, he throws it against the wall as hard as he can. I don't need your effing award. I don't, come back. You, you, do, you know what you did to me, you son of a... So all of a sudden, Deep Kevin so Sullivan, all of a sudden, Kevin Sullivan, who's running the show, hears this commotion, comes over to me. Savage looks at Kevin Sullivan. He says, you and you, meaning me, over here, we're going to talk. So with Sullivan behind me, Randy takes us to a, in a small area, a doorway, like a bathroom doorway. And there's no way I can get out of this doorway now. And he had just been at my house probably two months before doing a videotape for my kids, telling them how nice his dad, daddy is and all this. You son of a bleep. You know what you did? No, I don't. Shut up. He said, you know the contract that I have with Slim Jim? Yeah, they're going to drop contract because of you what are you talking about old man they don't want an old man representing them you son of a and he's he's in my face all red and i could smell liquor on his breath as well so kevin sullivan's standing there like what's he gonna do uh because it looked like randy was gonna hit me so i said can i shut that every time i tried to explain he says i hate your family i hate your kids and you know what? I hate you, man. And you know what? You ruin my... And then he spits at me. Takes off. Kevin Sullivan says, it's drinking, whatever. Just forget about it. So now I find a payphone. I call my office. And Stu Sachs or Peter King, whoever's the editor back then, I think it was Stu Sachs, said, he can't treat you like that. He said, you're going to go out and shoot this match tonight? I said, I don't know. This is Matt Hardy, and you are listening to the VOC Nation. Randy Macho Man Savage has regained the championship. Right here is the future of wrestling. 